And sadly, we have to start today's briefing off by saying nine residents passed away last night in Albany County and uh, to their families, to their loved ones. My condolences and prayers go out to you. It was a woman in her 60s, a man and woman in their 70s, three men in their 80s, a woman in her 80s, and a woman and man in their 90s. This brings our total uh, people passing away to COVID-19 in Albany County to 239 since the outbreak started. So you just got to bear with me. There, there were five total deaths from one nursing home. One resident passed away yesterday at the hospital. Four passed away at the nursing home. But it was between somewhere, and we're trying to get to the bottom of it, between December 12th and January 3rd. So these four go back to the nursing home in between that time frame, and we're not sure. Comes down to what we same argument we had with another setting and going back nine months ago that uh, when we talked about the, not getting the information from state DOH or not getting it on a dashboard or uh, the nursing homes not have to reporting to us. So uh, we're gonna get to the bottom of that, figure it out. Um, but again, it was in between four people that passed away between December 12th and January 3rd. Again, my heart breaks for all these families. It's a difficult time. And uh, you would hope after 10 months, we'd have the system down pat. You would think that we would have the nursing homes reporting to us. And under the law, under state DOH, private ones do not. Uh, they report to the state. But uh, we have to talk to our county coroners, too, because they should be updating us, too, also. So there's a little mix of everything in here. And uh, again, people are getting tired. And people are getting fatigued. And I know that. And we got to stay strong for one another. We got to remember it's a marathon, not a sprint. And we got to work together. And we got to stay strong. We started strong. We got to finish strong. And we'll get through this by being strong and, uh, and not getting complacent. As of today, there's 12,944 cases of COVID 19 to date, 272 positive cases since yesterday. Yesterday was an increase of 257. The day before that was 163 and a dip compared to what we've been seeing because of New Year's. This now brings our five day rolling average of positives down to 242.8 a day. Yesterday it was 257.6. There are currently 2,898 people under mandatory quarantine. Yesterday that number was 3,071. Of the new positive cases, 39 had close contact to a positive case. 20 are healthcare workers or uh, residents of a group setting. 213 don't have a clear source of infection at this time. As of today, 40,803 people now have completed quarantine. Of those, 11,163 tested positive for the virus and have recovery. That's an increase of 360 recoveries since yesterday. Unfortunately, this is the number we've been watching. There's, there were uh, 16 new hospitalizations overnight, uh, but now we're down to 154 people currently in the hospital from the virus. Yesterday, we're at 161, and uh, of, that was an all-time high And um, since this started. Despite the numbers going down, our hospitalizations continue to go up, 8.65%, which is the highest it's been since December 4th. Unfortunately, there's still 18 patients currently in the ICU. Yesterday, it was 23. I continue to urge people to wear a mask, socially distance, cough into your arm, clean your hands, stay six feet apart. Help us get through this, and we will. So on top of that, we really need people to stay home and as much as possible, do the right thing. Uh, yes, please, you can go to your local businesses, you can still order your food, you can still support your, the restaurants or the neighborhood stores. A lot of them have curbside pickup now, you can order, you can get delivery. So there's a variety of things you can do to continue to support these businesses here, the backbone of our community and our neighborhoods, and, uh, and do it remotely and safely. So we've been, we've been getting a lot of uh, people, constituents reaching out to my office about getting the vaccine. I know there's a lot of people out there that want to get the vaccine, and we're still in 1A, the 1A phase of, of uh, the vaccine. This includes healthcare workers, first responders, medical roles, residents, employees of a nursing home, and long-term care facilities. During this, this phase, employees and managers of these facilities should also contact about getting the shot. So bear with us, we're getting through it, and uh, you know, um, 
we're adapting and changing. It's going to take a lot of time. Uh, as you know, Operation Warp Speed didn't work out as well, and uh, we're adapting and we're overcoming, and we're making sure that the pods are getting set up and we're getting it out to as many people as we can. We've been actually, our numbers are better than most other places in the state of getting the vaccine out or the vaccine in arms, I should say. So, uh, you know, but again, we have to do better. We can't have vaccines sitting in the hospitals or sitting on the shelves, and that can be getting in people's arms to stop this infection to get us where we need to be at 70% of people getting the shots. You know, so Brendan Lyons wrote a good story, Teddy in the Times Union. I think there's one in the rec Troy Record was a great story. So uh, please read that. And, uh, you know, we, we, you know, things change, right? Everything changes, and we have to adapt to what's going on and make it work for the people. Go to OmniMed's website. They have a great website. It breaks down the phases that you would fall into. And you have to help us help you as we continue to reach out to people, adults that are 75 or older, please contact your doctors if you have underlying health issues so you can get notified so when you that category hits you can go and get the shot you know so you have to help educate yourself too through this if you really want the vaccine you want to know where you fall go to the website go to our website go to the state's website it's out there it tells you the different phases and uh, where you fall in that category uh, help us help you please and uh, again, I, I, you know, sign up to be a volunteer. You know, that was, Dr. Whalen can talk about that. It's been a huge success. And uh, the more people, the better off we are to help get through this. So please, everyone, um, read and know where the, uh, you fall in the categories. And we'll get through it. So no place has been spared, including here in Omni County, where COVID-19 has taken hundreds of Omni County residents in the span of nearly 10 months. And it's hard to believe, yes, we've been here for almost 10 months, Dr. Wellen, you and I, uh, never in my wildest dreams did I think this would be continuing on at this pace. Um, and uh, I didn't think what's going on these next months, this next month and a half was gonna happen. So uh, again, we're working in conjunction with uh, Omni Med, St. Peter's and the other regional hospitals to come up with a contingency plan for hospital beds and other things. So uh, we're trying to bring that number down to make sure that we don't end up like California, like I said before, or other areas where people are outside in parking garages or mid-shift tents, if we get there. And I'm hoping we don't. I'm hoping we continue to do the right thing until all the residents out there are doing the right thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're gonna get through it. We just gotta be positive. You gotta reimagine how things are and uh, do what's right. And the light is at the end of the tunnel and especially with the vaccine. But uh, Dr. Whalen. Good morning, everyone. So let's talk about vaccine. And you know, we have been here for 10 months and um, I sadly would have anticipated that. I thought it was gonna go on this long. I think it'll go on much longer. Uh, but what I wanna say is that we are at a critical juncture. And this juncture, I am happy to say, has reinvigorated um, my very fatigued staff. Everybody has found new energy, new focus, and a new purpose. And that is to get the vaccine out. Um, I, I also read the article in the paper this morning. Uh, I will say that while that uh, disconnect may be happening in other parts of the state, I think Albany Med and our county health department and the other participating co county health departments are launching a fantastic effort. There have been daily phone calls every single day in which each entity, and you have all the local health departments, all the hospitals, and Albany Med, reports out on what they are doing, what they are planning, how many vaccines have been given out, how many new um, uh, volunteers we can bring on board, uh, and it is a continuously iterative process. I can't say how helpful these calls are to all of us, because if one person has an issue and they share how they solved that issue, it helps all the other partners. We work very well together, and I think we are going to have uh, you know, a great effort continue in the capital region, and I'm happy to say that the county health department is happy to be joining that uh, effort. Um, you know, We have had plans for years in place, but all of us are learning real-time lessons too. Our plans uh, were for vaccine countermeasure um, and were for pandemic planning. The fact that we are looking to provide vaccine to a public 
who has a high burden of illness certainly creates additional um, challenges that we're all ensuring that we're doing the best to protect those that are coming to our vaccine pods and to the staff that are providing them. Um, there are tremendous burdens on uh, IT, on making sure that data systems are available and up and running and at capacity to meet this need uh, that is across the entire state. Um, but I want to reassure the public. I think that the, the narrative um, that, uh, that there's not coordination going on, I can only speak for Albany County, but I would unequivocally say that the best job that can be done is being done. And with that, I think, you know, the public has to be aware that this is a real-time, real-time response. So what our goal is, is to be limited only by the vaccine supply that we have and to work quickly through the prioritization strategy. So we're getting, uh, as you can imagine, our phones are ringing off the hook at the health department. We are getting thousands of calls from individuals who are asking about vaccination, who want to present their individual um, cases to get vaccine. Uh, I would advise people that you know we're, we are mandated strictly to adhere and will be strictly adhering to the prioritization schedule. If you need to know whether you are a priority, you can visit our website or you can visit the states. I will tell you that there's a link that's up currently that says, are you eligible? And if you go through it and click and become eligible, it says that it will lead you to pods and our health department is listed. There is not a live link to this at this juncture. This is something uh, that we are working on. Uh, right now for our pod planning, we are reaching out to populations and we are getting populations signing up. So as this expands, as these links become public, as we get into 1B, that is when uh, you know, the public will have access uh, to the links. So I ask for patience there. People are calling and asking, well, can I get on a list for 1B in advance? And the answer to that is no. There is no database or lists that are currently being put together as soon as that becomes available, as soon as I know more about that. I promise you I will release that information. Our goal is to get vaccine into arms as quickly as possible. This goal is shared by the medical center and all the partners of the regional hub. And I really think the efforts so far have just been outstanding. Um, it is a very open dialogue. Everyone is uh, working together on the challenges. Um, and we are really heartened, and I want to congratulate the Capital District by the amount of people that are signing up, uh, retired doctors and nurses and other health professionals who are stepping forward and saying, how can I help? Um, we, will, we, will be in, we will be back uh, in touch with you as we look at setting these sites up. We currently have a number of our Medical Reserve Corps who we will be utilizing this week with these efforts. And as the size and scale of our efforts go up, we will need more. The Medical Center will need more. Our local health, um, public health uh, department partners will need more. So if you have reached out and have not received an immediate response, please know that your name is there and you will likely be called upon as we scale up. Uh, th this January, uh, I've been saying to all my employees, this is, uh, this is our Olympics. And my staff is, uh, is really, really, as I said, energized by this. Um, we are prepared to meet the challenge. Uh, we have uh, you know, a renewed vigor and are really looking forward uh, to being part of the, the historic end to this uh, very difficult time. I think it's going to be important going forward to give information about, uh, you know, the vaccine. Uh, we, we are not seeing a great deal of vaccine hesitancy. Um, we are uh, in the populations, in the 1A population, we're estimating that about 75 to 80 percent of people that are eligible will be taking the vaccine, but I can't give that as a hard number because 
we'll, we're uh, collecting it as we go forward. Um, so that's good. We want a large amount of people to get the vaccine. I think particularly in light of the uh, highly communicable variant being found in Saratoga, there's been an additional concern and an additional push, push for people to get information about vaccines. And, uh, you know, again, I want to share with you that as, as this becomes available, I will share with you um, everything that I know as I know it. Um, the vaccine is safe. The vaccine is effective. And, uh, you know, we need to get a lot of people to take this vaccine. Um, I think that, uh, you know, as I indicated, we are seeing really high numbers of uh, the ability to push vaccine out. And so far, um, among the 18 plus thousand people in our region that have been, uh, you know, vaccinated, we have not seen serious um, side effects, allergic reactions, et cetera. Uh, people that are getting it are saying it's, it's uh, similar to a flu shot. Sometimes there's a little bit of a sore arm. Um, with the first dose, uh, but generally, um, generally, I think people are uh, are doing well. Uh, my husband is a healthcare provider. He, through his work, uh, has been vaccinated and had absolutely no side effects whatsoever. So, um, so I think you know we can give you more information on that going forward. It is going to be very important that we get this vaccine out. Uh, and I do want to reassure the public that in our area, the collaborative efforts are ongoing. And, uh, you know, we are dealing with this at the local health department um, amidst the very high number of cases that we're um, continuing to case investigate. Um, we are working very closely with our schools uh, to assist them um, with testing um, as, that, uh, as, as we anticipate guidance on that will be uh, forthcoming very quickly and some schools have decided uh, to do uh, surveillance testing or diagnostic testing for their students. Uh, so there is a lot going on. There's an awful lot going on and we are working through multiple channels. Um, but um, if I could take a moment uh, to recognize the staff uh, at the local health department at the Albany County Department of Health, I would like to do so because I, ha I will say um, I just never, I, I always loved everybody that I worked with, but I never knew how amazing each and every one of them was. And they are all rising to the challenge. Everyone is working to their best personal capacity. Everyone is um, all hands on deck. And, uh, and, and we are very lucky in Albany County to have the staff that we have uh, that continues in this very difficult effort. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Wilm. And again, you know, I just want to remind everyone, the light is at the end of the tunnel with a safe and effective vaccine, as Dr. Whelan said, and it's critical that we join together as one community because we can beat the virus, protect our community, and save lives if we work together as one. So, Ashley, I might throw a question back at you, Dr. Whelan, because uh, one of the questions we keep getting from a lot of constituents and people, if you have the COVID-19 antibodies, does that mean you can't get infected again? And uh, I keep trying to explain to people, does it mean you don't have to wear a mask? Because people think because they have the antibodies, they don't have to wear a mask and socially distance, and they can just socially gather. So those are, those are some good, that's a good question. Um, if you have had an antibody test that indicates that you have had COVID in the past, um, we don't know how long that immunity will last. Uh, so we do recommend individuals that have had COVID in the past, as long as it is uh, more than 30 days ago, that they should be vaccinated uh, so that we get uh, better protection for immunity. Also, it's really important that people be aware when they get the COVID vaccine, it doesn't mean you can walk out the door and stop wearing a mask, even after your second vaccine. What the vaccine does is prevent you from getting sick. It doesn't necessarily prevent you from transmitting infection if you become in contact with it. So I know that's uh, news to a lot of people. Um, it is uh, vaccine um, does protect you to a 95% level from getting sick with COVID. But until we have enough people vaccinated, um, we are going to continue to need to push the importance of wearing masks, of hand washing, of social distancing, of all the practices that we have um, continued to advocate for. 
uh, it still will not be done with us even um, when we start to see the vaccine rates in increase. I anticipate, uh, you know, it'll take months to roll out to the entire public, um, and it will be a long time before we are living lives without masks. Thank you, and I uh, just wanted to clarify that because I continue to get that question, and we continue to try to put it out there, so thank you. So uh, just switch gears, I, you know, I announced the amendment to the emergency order capping the third party delivery fees at 15%. And uh, that amendment uh, ver version also uh, capped marketing and other fees at 5% where they're making their money. So a little bit of uh, good news yesterday, we're notified by uh, four local restaurants that Grubhub had announced they would not be adding uh, and abiding by the caps that we put in place. And actually, in one case, uh, Jason, thank you for the heads up. They refunded fees to that restaurant, so uh, which is nice. Again, showing support for local restaurants and making sure that we keep them in business as we continue to move forward. And uh, I also just want to say uh, one of the uh, other issues we had on here, we've been fighting since, I think, 2014 with bomb trains and other trains in the, in the Port of Albany and throughout this nation, uh, was the positive train control and uh, it was finally implemented uh, two weeks early. So I want to thank Eric Anderson for his article in the Times Union today because uh, it spells it out. But the federal law, uh, this was announced by the Federal Railroad Administration. It was uh, finished two days ago before uh, the deadline Congress mandated at the end of 2020. It took a long time for us to get there, but it's been a very uh, vocal, we've been very vocal about this and the importance of the positive train control for many years. The PTC is intended to prevent trains from running through red signals and being switched to the wrong track. So again, this covers over 57 thousand miles of uh, railroad track so thank you for getting that done takes a while but uh, I just thought I would share that because it is a great story and uh, a conclusion to a battle we've had here since 2014 and have not forgotten also to Senator Schumer for his uh, being elected to the uh, leader's position in the in the Senate so congratulations to him and I look forward to working for, with him and uh, the wonderful things he's gonna do here for the state of New York Please, if you need to get tested, go to the Whitney Young, 518-465-4771. Uh, uh, we cover it if you don't have insurance. Also, UAlbany set up many sites throughout the state through the governor's office. No insurance needed, no co-pays. Uh, that number is 188-364-3065. And again, go to the albanycounty.com website. You can see the places where you can get tested, age requirements for different kids, rapid tests, wait times, all that stuff. Please go on there and uh, you know, know where you want to be or where, where the best location is for you to get to. Also, mental health. I, I, I've, uh, I'm going to probably talk to Dr. G about coming in to talk about it. I talked to you last week about some of the people being really, um, you know, screaming at the people that are trying to help them. And, and that's not what they're there for. They're there to help you, uh, to get the help that you need. And if you look around you, people are getting more tense and people are getting more agitated. Uh, because again, as Dr. Whalen and I have said, this has been 10 months. It's been a long 10 months, but we got to finish strong and we have to finish together. And I know it's difficult. Trust me. I know. I know people want to see their loved ones in nursing homes. I know they want to be with their parent family. I know they want to just travel. But if we hang in there together, we'll get through this. We're there. Like Dr. Whalen said, it has energized so many people. But just think about the men and women that have to go out there every day, regardless of whatever their job is, to keep our society moving. Think of the CDTA bus drivers. The men and women that have to drive them buses to get people to work, get them home, get them to the doctor's appointments, get them around. You know, there's people in every field that are working so hard for the people of Albany County and the Capital District. Please think about them and to the families that lost people. We can get through this. We can get through this working together, staying calm and trying to figure this out together. And as Dr. Whalen said, you know, we've learned a lot of lessons these last 10 months and the things we did right, the things we didn't do right and the things we need to do better. And, uh, but we all need one thing, partnerships, and no finger pointing, working together, finding a solution to the issue, being part of 
the issue, not being uh, the person that's causing more problems. Be positive about how we approach this and how your answers are. But again, please do the right thing out there. Our 24-hour sexual assault hotline number, 518-447-7716. Uh, our great partnership with United Way with Pete Gannon at 211. And New York State hotline at 188-364-3065. Please stay safe out there. Wear your mask. Cough in your arm. Clean your hands. Stay six feet apart.